President Biden has officially signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act into law, marking a rare moment of bipartisanship in Washington. Here to discuss is Congresswoman Grace Meng of New York, the very lawmaker who introduced the bill in the House. Welcome, Congresswoman Meng. We're so happy to have you here with us. And I want to start by asking you what it meant to you, how it felt when you saw President Biden sign that bill into law, a bill that you obviously had so much at stake in terms of getting it not only to the floor, but then being passed and signed by the president. Thanks so much for having me. And I really felt such a huge sense of relief. We have been asked by so many people in my district and around the country what Congress is doing about this rise in bigotry. And we were proud to have this legislation um, get moving quickly through the House and the Senate and onto President Biden's desk in such an efficient manner. Um, and I want to reiterate that this legislation uh, aims to protect not only Asian Americans, but any community who is a victim of bullying and hate. And you talk about a uh, victim of bullying and hate. Uh, you are yourself uh, a victim of that, and you let folks know it, and you shared some voicemails that came into your office. We're going to share a couple with our audience, and then I'm going to ask you about it on the other side. Hey, you look like a Chinese virus, you fat slob. Or maybe Kung Flu, you fat slob. Or maybe Wuhan. What about the Karate Kid virus or the Kung Fu virus or the... Well, I'll call the FBI and, and put you in jail, you... Congresswoman, those were actual voicemails that came into your office. I want to ask you first, are they still coming your way? And secondly, who are these folks? I'm not getting as many anymore. And look, I, I'm in politics. I have pretty thick skin. Um, and that was a reaction to literally a symbolic resolution Congress passed last year just condemning bigotry towards Asians. Um, and so it, it doesn't bother me personally, but I really thought it was important to get out. I really thought that it was important for the Asian American community not to be seen as invisible and silent, even though they've been screaming out for over a year uh, about these uh, incidents. Congresswoman, I have to say it was mm. chilling, um, alarming, hurtful to hear the voices put to those uh, voicemails because you can hear them, you can read them even, but when you listen to having actual Americans say those things to you, call you with such hatred and such bigotry, it is appalling to say the very least. And now that this bill is signed into law, you are not stopping there to stop the hate. Tell us what's next. Sure. Well, this legislation is a very important step, but it is not the only step. It is one piece of the puzzle towards uh, a solution. We need to do much more. One issue that I'm concerned about is the area of mental health. As we've seen in New York City statistics, uh, about 40 some percent of the attackers of these incidents have suffered from mental health problems. And so we want to make sure that we are investing more robustly in mental health resources for both attackers to victims for, for all communities. Um, and we're also working on more diverse education. Uh, kids in this country do not learn enough about different communities and their contributions uh, to uh, what makes up American history, from the Chinese Exclusion Act to the Japanese incarceration camps to slaves building the U.S. Capitol. Those are important pieces of our American history that deserve more than a few sentences in a textbook. To your point there about contributions, uh, I want to get your reaction to this uh, recent survey that showed that only 42, 42% uh, rather, of Americans could not name a single prominent Asian American when they were asked. That's 42%. And those who could name one, the first name they came up with was Jackie Chan, who was from Hong Kong. And the second name they came up with was Bruce Lee, who died, I guess, 50 years ago. Well, what do you make? Of a, st of a statistic, a survey like that, it's kind of head scratching, uh, or maybe it doesn't surprise you. Case in point, if yeah. the last Asian American you can think of is Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan, who technically is not uh, from America, then that is a very precise reason why we need more education. We need to see more uh, people from diverse communities, uh, whether it's in our history books, our media outlets, 
uh, making sure that our different communities are no longer invisible from the history books to the budget books of government and philanthropy. Uh, we need to make sure that what, what we see and, and read about uh, are truly America. Well, if folks want to find some prominent Asian Americans, they can actually look to Congress. We've uh, had some of your colleagues here on, uh, in particular, Senator Hirono not too long ago. So uh, we appreciate you and her and the fight uh, that you all put up for this particular legislation. It had to feel good to see it signed into law. So, Congresswoman, thank you so much for taking some time with us, and we'll see you down the road, all right? Thanks so much. Take care. <laughs> Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.